One form of psychotherapy that I don't think gets enough attention is rational motive behavior therapy. It has a lot in common with other forms of therapy like cognitive behavior therapy and acceptance and commitment therapy, but its philosophical framework is just a little bit different. Overall, what it's about can be summarized best in the ABCs of rational motive behavior therapy. And the ABCs are the activating event, the belief, and the consequence. Usually when we experience something bad and then we're sad about it, we say that the thing that happened caused our sadness. But in reality, there's always a moderator there. There's always a belief about the thing. So for example, if somebody calls you fat and you get extremely upset, chances are you have a belief that you're not recognizing. It's probably something along the lines of people must find me attractive all the time. And in rational emotive behavior therapy, therapists try to find the beliefs that are at the cause of as much suffering as possible. So I used the fat example because a lot of times people do have a belief that they must be attractive to other people. And when you have the belief that you must be attractive to other people in order to be a worthwhile person, a lot of things are going to hurt you. People calling you fat, people calling you ugly, people insinuating that you're not attractive, people rejecting you, all of these things are going to hurt much more if you believe that you must be attractive in order to be worthwhile. So by disputing a belief like this, you can give yourself a lot more happiness in life and a lot more resilience. Overall, beliefs that cause the most suffering tend to fall in one of three categories. One is a failure to unconditionally accept yourself, one is a failure to unconditionally accept others, and one is a failure to unconditionally accept life. And unconditionally accepting these things are obviously very difficult things to do, but there are strategies that can help you. So Albert Ellis, the guy who came up with the philosophy behind rational motive behavior therapy, calls a lot of irrational thinking masturbation, because a lot of people will just insert the word must into so many of their beliefs. I must be attractive to other people, I must succeed in life, I must have a lot of money and friends, and so many of the beliefs that cause your suffering probably have the word must in there somewhere. And trying to stop masturbating can actually really help you identify your beliefs that are causing your suffering more quickly. And disputing them is a whole other issue. Even after you identify what beliefs are causing your suffering, it can be really difficult to dispute them. And usually it's something that somebody works on one-on-one -on -one with their therapist over several sessions. But one strategy is rational motive imagery. This is where people just imagine having the belief that they want to have instead of the irrational belief and they imagine all of the ways it would improve their lives, and they can visualize all of the differences it would make. So you imagine going through an interaction where somebody says something that implies you're unattractive or worthless, and you just accept it. And that kind of gives you a plan for how you behave in situations where this belief is relevant. And having a plan for the behavior is actually a really important element of all behavior therapies. And another thing that classifies this as a behavior therapy is that it often involves a lot of practice. A lot of times people have a belief that everybody must not think they're strange. So a lot of times a therapist might give you homework where you have to do something strange in public on purpose. One famous example has been walking a banana on a leash through the subway systems. People will notice you, people will think you're strange, and you just have to practice accepting that. And once you practice accepting it with something that you know isn't really tied to your personality, it'll then be a little easier to accept it when people think you're strange for things that you actually genuinely believe. And that'll give you a much more stable sense of confidence in life. So this form of therapy is actually really well supported, especially for things like depression and anxiety. It's not as supported for more severe mental illnesses like bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. And it's generally more effective for people who already have good rational habits, because that means people already have the tools they need to help fight the irrational beliefs that are leading to their suffering. There are also ways of implementing this philosophy in effective ways outside of the therapeutic context. There are even apps that are being developed and studied that are meant to help with the disputation process. People are also trying to incorporate the philosophical framework into school. Studies done on rational mode of education have shown that students who have just a short class can actually learn a ton and be much more resilient to mental illness in the future. And since mental illness is something that's so much easier to prevent than treat, I think incorporating this kind of thing into education is actually a really good idea. There's also a ton of evidence that unconditional acceptance of the self is just good in so many ways. Self-compassion, which is a mindful and unconditional form of self-kindness, benefits people tremendously. Self-compassion is the tendency to mindfully and unconditionally treat yourself kindly. And this is very much in line with how rational behavior therapists imply that people should be. There's tons of evidence supporting the fact that self-compassion helps people be resilient to depression, anxiety, and better cope with stress. People are often concerned that their motivation depends on conditional self-acceptance, but psychologists are actually pretty confident that that is not the case and that self-compassion very much supports motivation. 
and there are a lot more resources about this topic in the description. I definitely encourage you to check those out if you're interested. And if you're a generally rational person who is suffering from depression or anxiety, I would definitely consider looking into a rational emotive behavior therapist. So check out more information about it, watch my other videos, share, subscribe, and support me on Patreon. I hope you enjoyed watching.